So the Game Award nominees got announced freaking today, and it's a very exciting day for me personally because I'm very into the Game Awards, not for the game announcements, but for the recognition of the craft that goes into my favorite pastime of a hobby. And I was curious to record my voting for all the categories. I feel I have something decently, you know, to say about all of them. We're going to go over things I personally thought was snubbed. And this is coming from a person that continuously watches like reviews to games that I don't even play and like keeps hearing what people think of things. I try to do my best to stay in the know and to hear what people are saying. So there's going to be a few of these categories and I'm going to be like, yeah, I played that game more, but I feel like this game deserves it more. So We'd love to know what you think, though, before we get started as we get into this. And yeah, I'm just going to go through these and share some thoughts of what, you know, what what I think. And this right away, this best esports stuff, I, I have nothing to say about it. I'm not going to vote on anything here either, because even though I might just say recognize Fabian or whatever, that doesn't mean I'm going to vote for it because that's just not fair. I don't know that category and all the other people in it. So that's just not me. That's just not me. But what I do see here is best debut game. This used to be called a best uh, uh, or fresh indie game, which is basically like the first game uh, these guys have published. And we have Carrion, Mortal, Sh uh, Mortal Shell, uh, Raji, and Ancient Epic, Roki, and Phasmophobia, which is funny because I've actually heard of all these and seen a decent amount of Phasma, Mortal, and Carrion. Um, th this is kind of... I don't think I want to vote in this category because I haven't heard enough about all these guys, but I'm just going to tell you right now, Carrion's going to win it because it's the only one of these five that actually got nominated for best indie game spoilers. So because of that, I am going to skip this one, but I just do think Carrion will win it. Um, best content creator of the year. This is another one that I'm, I know, I recognize all these folks, but this is something I just, I'm sorry. I have to vote Alana Pierce, even though I don't feel super well versed with all five of these guys, but I do recognize all of them. And Alana, however, is just such a damn reliable source. If you want to like get the insights on the gaming scene and just very raw content as well. She is fantastic and I highly recommend you follow her and hands down. I feel like she deserves it because she's been all over everywhere providing great stories. Best multiplayer. Uh, we have Animal Crossing, Among Us, Call of Duty Warzone, Fall Guys, Ultimate Knockout and Valorant. And two things really quick. Actually, three things. Four things. <laughs> Call of Duty Warzone. It does not surprise me that is here um, because it did just all of a sudden kind of sweep the nation recently. Uh, not recently, but once it started becoming a thing. And I am surprised to see Animal Crossing and Among Us here. And the only reason I say that is not because I have any problems with them, but it's because... Is Animal Crossing's multiplayer great? <laughs> But, but it's like good enough, you know, like it's what the multiplayer represents, I think, that people really like. And honestly, I can't subs, I can't think of anything else that might be more of a fitting pick in here. Unfortunately, uh, I don't think this was the best year for multiplayers. However, Among Us, Among Us made it into this category and that's a little bit shocking. I was not expecting that. And that's really great to see. However, my vote here is hands down Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout. I'm sorry, but it's because um, as much as I think uh, Among Us is a great multiplayer game, and I think Warzone is honestly one of the best Battle Royale games I've played, Fall Guys just completely revamps the, the Battle Royale genre. And for that, I wish it was nominated for Best Game Direction. Spoilers, it was not. But I think it completely changed the Battle Royale genre that is very prominent today. And I want to see more games like it. That it's not about just killing people and just murder is the way to play games. No, Fall Guys, it's not about murder. It's simply about playing these Mario Party-like games and making it through the gauntlet of challenges. So I say Fall Guys. Uh, best Sports and Racing, I'm not going to vote on this because I don't. I, I'm not versed enough and know enough about these games. However, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, between Dirt 5, F1 2020, FIFA 2021, NBA 20, uh, 2K21, and Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, I think it's going to be between NBA and Tony Hawk's because I heard some great things about those games. But otherwise, these are all just eligible by default. This is the one category I think is dumb, personally. 
not because of the games and it being like a category for these games get recognized, but I hate that it's separated. I hate that best simulator and best strategy are put together. But this says best game focused on real real time or turn based simulation or strategy gameplay, irrespective of platform. And our nominees are Crusader Kings 3, Desperados 3, Gears Tactics, Microsoft Flight Simulator, and XCOM Chimera Squad. And like the reason I hate this is because I think strategy games should have their own category and Sims should have their own category. But for the most part, these are all just like strategy games. And it's really weird to see Flight Simulator just mixed into it. It, it It's so weird to see Flight Simulator mixed in with all these great strategy games. And that's horseshit. So I, I, I don't know if I even want to vote on this category because it's hands down between Gears Tactics and Microsoft Flight Simulator. But in just terms of critical recognition, these other games I heard great things about too. But like, it's just not freaking fair. It's really not. But uh, I, I don't know. I hate voting for this category because if there's a strategy, ta- if there's a strategy one, it's Gears Tactics. If it's a sim one, it's Microsoft Flight Simulator. But I am going to give this a Microsoft Flight Simulator, even though this is a stupid category, um, just because I think that this is the one category I'll have a shot at, but Gears Tactics will win. Best Family Game. Uh, This was really surprising and happy to me because I completely forgot about a lot of the games in this category. For Best Family Game, for the best game appropriate for family play, irrespective of genre or platform, we have Animal Crossing. 100%. 100%. Crash Bandicoot Ford's About Time, which I for some reason forgot about. Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout comes again. Mario Kart Live Home Circuit, no surprise. Minecraft Dungeons, even though I played like crazy this year, I completely forgot existed. And Mario Party, The Origami King, which is pro- which is the only category that I figured this game would get nominated for, and I was right. Um, I thought it might have a chance for Best Art Direction, but alas, it did not. Um, no surprise this year. I think all these games deserve to be here and uh, like they all make sense. And for the most part, they're all great games. I I think Paper Mario and uh, uh, Mario Kart Live are probably the two lowest scoring ones. Um, Minecraft Dungeons is definitely the one I put the most time into. And Fall Guys is the one I have the most like that's one of my game of the years. But guess what? I'm not going to vote for it. You know why? Because Animal Crossing deserves to get this. Like, even though I like Minecraft Dungeons and Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout more, and those are games I played, I personally think that uh, Minecraft, or sorry, uh, Animal Crossing New Horizons is a game that is perfect for families and to just kind of calm folks down and and just have a good time sitting on the couch with folks. But yeah, I just believe Animal Crossing deserves this most because it's just the most like quaint game of all these. And while yes, some of these encourage more like couch play with split screen and co-op and shit, Animal Crossing just in terms of the most family friendly game this year is probably the most recognizable period, which is why I was nominated for game of the year, but we'll get to that. Best fighting game. I, I I don't think I can vote for this one because honestly, um, but in case you're interested, there's Grand Blue uh, Fantasy Versus, which I personally think will win. Mortal Kombat 11 Ultimate, Street Fighter 5 Champion Edition, One Punch Man, a hero nobody knows, and Under Night in Birth EXE Late CLR. Um, and the thing about this category is, it's just kind of weird for me to see that there is like two games nominated here that are like the Ultimate Editions or whatever. Uh, but yeah, I think this is Grand Blue Fantasy's category to win personally. Uh, but let me know what you think. I just don't feel like I'm, I've heard enough about these to be able to say. So I'm going to move on to best role playing game to which nothing here surprises me at freaking all, except for one thing. We have Final Fantasy VII Remake completely. Uh, Genshin Impact was surprised. I almost forgot about that game. Persona 5 Royal. I'll get back to you. Wasteland 3. I'll get back to you. And Yakuza Like a Dragon at the very last minute, dude. Um, I don't think anything here deserves to be left off, but I do want to recognize that Wasteland 3, guess what? That is a game that is under one of the new Xbox Game Studios games, and it's nominated for Best RPG, just FYI, before you say Xbox doesn't make good games. And Persona 5 Royal. That is an interesting circumstance because it is, it's, you know, it's like a, what would you call it? It's like the same game, but they just added a lot 
to it. So I feel weird, but also not about it being nominated. I was legitimately curious if they were going to nominate for that for anything. Uh, but this to me is 100% Final Fantasy VII Remix category to win. Um, there's just so much recognition behind it. And it's like one of the key pillars of RPGs and it being in this category period. It just makes sense. So yeah, but I think everything else here deserves to be here. And shout out to Yakuza Like a Dragon for uh, making it in so last minute. But here we have Best Action Adventure to which there's no surprise from me here. Um, which again, action adventure specifically is for the best action adventure game combining combat with traversal and puzzle solving. We have no shock for me at all except for two things. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, uh, Ghost of Tsushima, Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales, Ori and the Will of the Wisps, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, The Last of Us Part 2. And shout out to Ori and the Will of the Wisps. I did not think that would make it into this category at all. Like I said, it's one of my three games of the year. Um, and it's not going to win this category, I'll tell you what. But it is a phenomenal game that, like, I don't know. It's just neat to see this, this I guess, no longer indie game because they didn't put in the best indie game category. Maybe they just thought the other indie games are better. But I just, I'm happy to see it get recognized here. Um, but Jedi Fallen Order, that's a weird one, dude. Because that is a game from last year that was sup that's supposedly eligible for last year. Pokemon Sword and Shield and Jedi Fallen Order were released at the worst possible time, which is November 15th, and they somehow still get nominated for this year. And that's bonkers. I don't know. Like Jedi Fallen Order is a fantastic game. If you haven't played it yet, it's great. Um, there could be things that are better about it. I'd say it's like an eight out of ten game, but it's still really good game, and it it makes me happy to see it get recognized because it is a great game that missed out on the Game Awards last year. But it's like it was also eligible, so I just thought it was screwed. So that's kind of interesting to see it come back. But everything else here, one hundred percent. Last was two. Uh, Ghost of Tsushima and Assassin's Creed Valhalla, 100% expected these guys to be here, as well as Spider-Man Miles Morales. Um, this is a category, I don't know, like, it could go any way. I know for sure Ori won't take it, even though it's a fantastic game. Uh, and Last of Us Part Two, in terms of, like, an action adventure, that's what I'm saying. Think about the category. Not how good the game overall is, but think about the category. Combining combat with traversal and puzzle solving. And because of that, uh, that's a tough one for this. I really don't know. I, I, I'm I, going to say Spider-Man Miles Morales. No, they're not going to pick that. They're not going to pick that, but in my opinion, I have a feeling... Uh, uh, I'm going to say Miles Morales just because of a gut feeling. I don't know. Um, but I've heard, I've listened to reviews for all these games constantly and I played, uh, three out of the six of them. Yeah. But like, I'm voting for one that I haven't even played because uh, just some things that game looks like it's doing. Um, but I could go any way here to be honest, but let me know what you did. Best action game. We got Doom Eternal, Hades, Half-Life Alex, Neo 2. And Streets of Rage 4. You know what's really weird? I didn't... <laughs> I remembered Streets of Rage 4 was a thing more than Neo 2. I completely forgot Neo 2 happened this year. <laughs> but legit, uh, this is Doom Eternal's category. Like, 100%. This is a lock for Doom Eternal, in my opinion. Um, I will be shocked if anything else beats it. Um, but it's very neat to see Hades here. I will say that Hades as an indie game is uh, in the best action category, which is neat. Uh, Hades made it into a lot of categories, actually. But Half-Life Alex as well, like as an action game, it was pretty neat to see here. Like, And just Streets of Rage 4, like, I don't know. This is just kind of an interesting category, but this is Doom Eternal's category to win because that game is literally metal hardcore as balls. But anyways, we have innovation and accessibility, recognizing software and or hardware that is pushing the medium forward by adding features, technology, and content to help games be played and enjoyed by an even wider audience. 
And when I heard about this category, I'm like, Last of Us 2 and Grounded has to be in this category. And sure enough, they are. Um, we have Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Grounded, Hyper Root, Last of Us Part 2, and Watch Dogs Legion. And I honestly, I don't know... I, I should look into what Watch Dogs Legion, Hyper Root, and Assassin's Creed Valhalla are doing, but I just, I, I love so much what Last of Us Part Two did specifically. I'm sorry, this is one that I am going to go a little bit biased here, but I just don't see how that could be topped. There's so much accessibility features in that game, and I'm glad this is a category for those that have any kind of handicaps or stuff, but... In my opinion, the stuff The Last of Us 2 did in terms of like the black and white and uh, the changing of colors and blah, 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 and just making the game much more accessible to people that might not be able to experience it. But next category, we have Best VR and AR, and our nominees are Dreams, to which I wasn't aware that had a VR thing yet, but that's awesome, Half-Life Alex, uh, Marvel's Iron Man VR, Star Wars Squadrons, and The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners. Uh, this is a lock for Half-Life Alex. This is a freaking lock for Half-Life Alex. Um, second lock that we voted on because I've just heard Half-Life Alex is one of the best games period of the year and it's easily like one of the best VR games of all time if not the best and it's just kind of like every other VR game here. They're neat. They're cool. Especially I think Dreams and uh, Star Wars Squadrons are cool but like this is just Half-Life Alex's category to win. Uh, very well deserved so, because everything I've seen of that game just looks stupendous. So, best community sport, which is pretty much um, keep updating the game after it's, you know, going on and released, and they could have just abandoned it, but they were listening to the community and updating it. This is the first category. I think there is a hardcore snub, which is bullshit, but we have Apex Legends, Destiny 2, Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout, Fortnite, No Man's Sky, and Valorant. And I I can't say anything for Valorant, unfortunately, and I feel like that's a little bit unfair, but but I would I really feel Valorant should have been swapped out. Again, it's not very fair for me to say this because I don't know anything about Valorant. It's the only one here I don't know anything about. But Master Chief Collection, dude. Master Chief Collection became potentially the best game that's on xbox period thanks to all the work that went into it this year specifically and i find it goddamn bullshit that it's not here yes there's a little bit of a fan talking here because i'm a huge halo fan but they made that game like so much better this year so much better and i don't know i find that very sad to not see that here so that's so far the only snub from me um but everything else here totally deserved. Fall Guys had some great community support. Uh, Destiny 2 is doing great as well. Like, everybody here is doing great. Um, uh, and I don't know if I can vote on this one very well, but I do think from what I've been seeing, um, No Man's Sky, man. I, I have been seeing... Like, I, I was about to vote Apex, but I just think No Man's Sky, there's so much about that game I've been hearing added to it and making it just all the more better than it was in release and it's it got like a series x and s patch that makes it look gorgeous and as much again as much as i love fall guys ultimate knockout that's my personal favorite game here i am thinking about the category not not what i personally like like the most i'm thinking about the damn category so and because of that i think no man's sky best mobile game I don't know any of these guys, but we got Among Us, Call of Duty Mobile, Genshin Impact, Legends of Runeterra, and Pokemon Cafe Mix. This is going to be between Genshin Impact and Among Us. Hands down. This is going to be between Genshin Impact and Among Us. But uh, I'm going to say Among Us. Just because... <laughs> I think Genshin Impact is a much more, like, deserving game, potentially. But I think it's spectacular to see what Among Us did this year. To like see this game that came out two years ago just all of a sudden reemerge, and yes, that might have been because some uh, bigger YouTuber streamed it or something, and that just became an infection of popularity. But it's just really cool to see that simple game make its way back. And Genshin Impact is honestly, if it wins over it, I completely understand. Best indie game we got Carrion, which was nominated for a uh, fresh indie game earlier. Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout, Hades, Spelunky 2, and Spiritfarer. 
you know, this, this is, a uh, this is a tough one, man. <laughs> All five of these from what I've heard, deserve to be here. They really do. I have heard great things about all five of these games. Um, seriously, man. I definitely don't think in the end Sp uh, uh, Splunky 2 or Spirit Fair will take it home. Um, you know, actually, I think Splunky 2... No, no, I don't think either of those two will take it home. Like, this is going to be Hades. And the reason I say this is going to be Hades is because Hades is nominated for Game of the Year. Every time an indie game is nominated for Game of the Year and it's in the best indie category, it always wins. So it's going to be Hades, but because of that, I admit I'm going to fight it. <laughs> it's going to be Hades, but man, this is the one time I am going to get biased with Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout because man, that was an indie game that I was not expecting to become as big as it is and it's freaking fun. It's so much fun, and it's an indie game that's a multiplayer, too, and that's pretty rare for me to experience personally, so I, hands down, I'm going to say Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout here. I hope it wins, but honestly, Hades is going to take it. Best ongoing game, um, so, somewhat similar to the community support thing here, which is awarded to a game for outstanding development of ongoing content that evolves the player experience over time. This is going to be pretty damn similar, but we we have the same nominees, essentially, except for Call of Duty Warzone, uh, but Apex Legends, Destiny 2, COD Warzone, Fortnite, and No Man's Sky. I'm I'm once again going to say No Man's Sky for the same reasons I say, as I said earlier. However, I think Fortnite will potentially take this one, but this could go any way, except I don't see Destiny 2 taking it personally, um, but that's a quick one. Games for Impact. For a thought-provoking game with a pro-social meaning or message, I don't have a vote here, but if you have one, I would love to see what it is in the comments. There is If Found, Kentucky Route Zero TV Edition, Spirit Fair, Tell Me Why, and Through the Darkest of Times. I'm not going to vote in this category because, I, again, I just don't feel like I have enough knowledge of all of these games to be able to say anything. Um... And the only two I'm very well aware of is Spirit Fair and don't and uh, tell me why. But I just I don't know for this category. I really don't. Um, but we'd love to know if you do. So I'm gonna pass this one. Best performance. I was really wondering if Last of Us Two was just gonna sweep this, and it kind of did. We got Ashley Johnson as Ellie in Last of Us Part Two. Laura Bailey as Abby in Last of Us Part Two. Daisuke Suji as Jin Sakai in Ghost of Tsushima, Logan Cunningham as Hades in Hades, and Najee Jeter as Miles Morales in Spider-Man Miles Morales. All five of these make sense. Uh, I can't vouch for Logan uh, in Hades. I can't vouch for that, but I'm assuming he does great work. Um, I didn't know what to put in this category except for Last of Us, to be honest, because the performance in Last of, the bleh, performances in Last of Us are freaking outstanding all around. And I didn't know who they nominate, to be honest. I really did not know. I was really, really, really hoping they would nominate Abby. Because guess what? I think Abby stole the freaking show. We're going to do this bullshit again, are we? I thought Laura Bailey as Abby stole the show. And there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be angry. Like, oh, Abby's the worst character ever. Like, why is she even here? And Last of Us Part 2 is probably not going to win any of the categories. If it's completely up to fans. I don't know how much of the vote that fans take up. But I hope it's not a significant amount. Because honestly, fans are too butthurt about The Last of Us Part 2, in my opinion. But I think everybody else here, I predicted that. You know, I predicted Miles and uh, Jin... And honestly, guess what? F you guys. I think Laura Bailey killed it as Abby. I thought her performance was way more powerful than uh, Ashley as Ellie. It was great, too. It's not me belittling a uh, Ashley's performance. It was fantastic. But I just personally feel like Laura and her character as Abby and what she did with that character stood out to me personally uh, just, just a little bit more than Ashley's did. So uh, Laura... Bailey as Abby is my vote for this best performance category. Fight me, whatever. Um, instantly, 20 dislikes because of that one decision. Best audio design. It's just the sound for the game. We have Doom Eternal, Half-Life Alex, Ghost of Tsushima, Resident Evil 3, and Last of Us Part 2. And Resident Evil 3 is the one I am pretty surprised to see here. To be completely honest, I didn't think Resident Evil 3 would be nominated for like anything this year at all. But for best audio design... I don't know. The game does seem to have great sound design. I've seen a great deal of it and heard a great deal about it. And I just 
I, I think this could have, should have been swapped out with the COD game, whether it's uh, Black Ops, probably. Like, maybe Black Ops didn't mat, like make it in time to be nominated or be considered for nomination, or it's like a Jedi Fallen Order situation. But I think something else probably should have made it into Resident Evil 3 slot. However, I could be wrong about that because it is just sound design. Um, this could go any of these ways, but I admit I'm voting Doom Eternal because that game's sound design, the crispiness, the crunchiness, just the base of everything is so damn juicy and I freaking love it. And I think everything else probably deserves to be here, but I just think Doom Eternal in terms of its music and sound is per Theta. So, anyways, gonna move on to best score, but let me know what you think there. Oh, oh, wait, no, never mind. So, best music and score, I've got that mixed up here. Uh, for the music, basically, we have Doom Eternal, once again, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Hades, Ori and the Will of the Wisps, and The Last of Us Part Two. All five of these make complete sense to me, personally, um, from what I've heard of each of these soundtracks. I actually have listened to Hades' soundtrack a bit, and it's spectacular um if anything i'm a little bit surprised to not see the pathless here because again maybe pathless didn't make it in time to be considered but i have been hearing great things about the pathless's music i'm also a little bit surprised that spyro miles morales isn't here either but these are some great choices like in the end i think music this year was a tough like that was a tough category to make it in with all the great goddamn soundtracks we got um but man, this is probably one of the toughest categories. I gotta be honest. This could go to any of these, personally. Like, I have no quarrels with any of these games winning this category. I really don't, because the music is outstanding for all of them. Uh, man, dude, this one's really tough. I want to say Doom Eternal... I want to say last... I want to say all these, man. This one's tough, but gun to my head, I'm going to say Ori and the Will of the Wisps just because there is a couple tracks in that game that leaves so many chills down my spine, and it's so damn great. And I personally think it actually passes the first game soundtrack by just a hair. There's a few soundtracks in the first game that make it into this one that, that are kind of remixed, but Will of the Wisps like gun to my head i would say will lewis but honestly any of these i completely understand best art direction for just you know outstanding and creative technical achievement in artistic design and animation and no surprises here either guess what it's pretty much the same all around to which by the way i am a little bit surprised ghost of tsushima didn't make it into here either but again that was, the music category was the hardest one this year but we have ghost of tsushima here with the final fantasy 7 remake for art direction, uh, Ghost of Tsushima, of course, Hades, or in the Well of the Wisps, of course, and The Last of Us Part 2, of course, for like stupendous. Last of Us Part 2, in terms of like the visual animations of things, that is one of the best looking games of last gen, hands down, up there with like Red Dead Redemption 2, Uncharted 4, and Gears 5. Like, Last of Us Part 2 looks phenomenal there's so many moments in that game that straight up look like a movie so i rec like i'm glad it's getting recognized for art direction will the wisp like of course will the wisp like the way that game looks is like a literal painting a lot of the times and hades has a certain look to it too however i don't think that this is the only one i personally don't think should win honestly um but i'm i think it deserves to be here somewhat ghost of tsushima yeah Hands down, I called it before Ghost of Tsushima even came out. I'm like, this game is going to get nominated for Best Art Direction and Music. I was wrong about the music, but I was right about the art direction. And Final Fantasy VII Remake is another one that I I personally wouldn't say win. Like, Hades and Final Fantasy VII Remake, I think that they deserve to be here, but I just don't... I just wouldn't personally vote for them to win. Um... This is actually a tough call for me between Ori, Last of Us Part 2, and Ghost of Tsushima for art. Uh, this one's actually a really tough one. Because from what I've seen of Ghosts, it is a very gorgeous looking game with what they did with some set pieces specifically. And again, Last of Us 2's animations are great. Ori's entire world is great. And because of that, I think I'll go Ori. Like, Ori's literally, like, it's the style of the game. It's not just about the animation. But honestly, if 
if Ghosts or Last of Us 2 take it, I 100% accept that. I 100% accept that. But for now, I'm, again, just gun to my head, I'm going to say Ori. Um, I guess it's a bit of favoritism, but it's also because that game is a literal painting. It's like the entire thing just looks like a freaking painting. Best narrative for outstanding storytelling and narrative development in a game. Hands down, I'm going to tell you right now, it's already Last of Us Part 2 for me, but we have 13 Sentinels, Agus Rim, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Ghost of Tsushima and Hades, and Last of Us Part 2. No question. This, this one, like, Last of Us Part 2 might not win, but, like, to me, to me, this is another lock. Like, Last of Us Part 2 should effing win because that game story is one of the best narratives i have ever experienced in a goddamn game and i know a lot of fans got butt hurt because oh they took two bold risks and like didn't do exactly how i wanted things to do with certain characters like no dude last of us part two was a really realistic told story that was not exaggerated that was not dramatic it was just straight up raw terrible shit that happens in a dark world like this and yeah narrative hands down last is part two for me there's no debate about that for, for me but again would love to hear your thoughts best game direction we have final fantasy 7 remake ghost of tsushima hades half-life alex and the last was part two this is another one of those categories that i personally felt like there was a snub and uh not heavily though not as heavily as the master chief collection earlier i really want to see fall guys here I really did because the battle royale genre is such a legitimate genre these days. The battle royale genre is a genre now and not as much of an idea anymore, but it's an actual like, hey, I want a new battle royale game. And Fall Guys just completely changed how battle royales work. They are no longer about just let's shoot or McGruber and kill people or whatever. It is just a fun game that you are surviving Mario Party like challenges and there's no other battle royale that does that shit. So I really wanted to see that get nominated here. But everything else here is safe in my opinion. Um, it really is. And I could see any of these winning, to be honest. Like, this is another one I could just see this going anywhere. But again, this is not for, like, the overall best game. This is simply about, like, where did this take things? Did this take this in a bold direction? Or did it do something for the industry? You know, like, did it set a new bar? Like, like, did it do something crazy? You know, and that's why I, I personally wish Fall Guys was here. But all these, again, Final Fantasy VII Remake took some, took some creative liberties and made a great remake. Ghost of Tsushima, it just has a great artistic direction. Hades uh, took the, um, starts with an R, uh, style game to cool places half-life alex is like one of the best vr games there is and last of us part two in terms of its narrative took some bold risks i don't know man i could go any way with this one freaking a um but honestly i think it's gonna be between half-life alex and last was part two for me and i even played half-life alex but the things i heard about that game ah oh, shit it's actually between those two because half-life alex made vr games just like, just like uh, Fall Guys, you know? Just like Fall Guys. I want Fall Guys to be here because of what it did for the Battle Royale genre. And Half-Life Alex is taking the VR genre into places that could make it very prominent. So because of that, I think I'll say Half-Life Alex, but I actually think I want Last of Us Part 2 to win. But I think Half-Life Alex, like, I like that idea. But now we have Game of the Year recognizing a game that delivered the absolute best experience across all creative and technical fields. We have Doom Eternal. <laughs> Was not expecting that in the slightest. Final Fantasy VII Remake, Ghost of Tsushima, Hades, Animal Crossing, New Horizons, and The Last of Us Part Two. I was expecting everything here except for Doom Eternal and Hades. Every year, there is always an indie game that makes it into the Game of the Year category. There was Celeste one year. There was uh, Inside Out, I think, another year. There's always an indie game that makes it into the freaking Game of the Year category, uh, most of the time, at least. And this year, that game is Hades. So kudos to Hades for uh, the outstanding achievements of recognition that it's getting. But I was like, I knew for a fact this category for sure was going to have Final Fantasy VII Remake, Animal Crossing, 
and the last was part two. I knew for sure those three would make it in. I thought Microsoft Flight Simulator would have a shot just because of how much well acclaimed that game has, but there's not enough hype behind it, I think, to nominate it for this. Um, and I think there was one other thing, but honestly, that was pretty much it. But I, I didn't know Hades. I, I, I thought Ghosts might make it in, but I wasn't sure. I did not expect Doom Eternal at all. Doom Eternal is the most shocking thing here. Um, it's a phenomenal game, hands down the best shooter of the year, and maybe that's why it made it into this category. Um, it like I still have a problem with the amount of platforming that's in that game, but when the platforming, <laughs> if the platforming wasn't as frequent as it was, Doom Eternal is hands down like one of the best shooter campaigns ever, if not the best. Um, and because of that. Okay, I'll stick with one of the best. Um, I'm just, I didn't expect it to be here. I really didn't. I just thought this was going to be full of a lot of other games because I thought Doom Eternal was too old. Animal Crossing and do would be here because of just the impact it had this year and how huge of a cultural hit it was. Um, uh, much more than Doom at the same time of release. Now, who do I think should win, will win, etc.? This one's actually really freaking tough. Um, bollocks. This one is actually really freaking tough. Um, I'm going to tell you hands down, Doom Eternal, no. Uh, even though that is, again, one of my personal three games of the year, I'm willing to recognize that there are other games that have much more recognition, are more universally well acclaimed, and made bigger impacts Doom Eternal is hands down my favorite game of all these categories, but but I want to put aside my own personal interest to recognize that these games have a better shot, except for Ghost of Tsushima. I will be a little bit upset if Ghost of Tsushima takes it. I really will, because that is like Doom Eternal, you know? It's a great game, but everything else here got much more universal acclaim, and yeah. So because of that, I think Doom Eternal and Ghost of Tsushima are the most... Like the least likely um but other than those two it's a completely i was shocked to hear how many people loved the final fantasy 7 remake not liked but actually loved you know and i don't know man this is actually really freaking tough <sighs> i really have a feeling even though i don't want it to win um I think Animal Crossing will win. I really do. And the reason I say that is because Animal Crossing had... It came at the most perfect time. If we weren't in the year of COVID and 2020 and shit, I, I would say Animal Crossing wouldn't win this category. But Animal Crossing legitimately made such a impact in a year that people needed it to give them some kind of lighthearted goodness to just be able to live a life in this village and be able to progress and do things. And because of that, I think Animal Crossing will win, and I'll accept it if it does, because I hear great things about the game too. Um, but for this one, I'm just going to vote what I personally think should win, and you know it, Last of Us Part 2. I think Last of Us Part 2 is the game of the year, in my opinion. I legitimately have... Like, no cons with that game at all, except for sometimes the pacing is a little bit off, in my opinion. But its overall animation, its art direction, its music, its performances, its narrative, again, is one of the best narratives I've ever experienced. And it's just an overall fantastically produced game. So because of that, I, I personally feel The Last of Us 2 should take it. However, I can completely see Animal Crossing, Hades, or Final Fantasy VII Remake taking it. Um, and again, it's like I said, Doom Eternal, that, that would be like my, like favorite game of the year, but I, this is about recognition and awards and stuff. And because of that, I can recognize that the last was part two to me is like the overall best produced game of the year. So those are my picks guys. I want to know what you pick and what you felt got snubbed. Is there anything that you wish got more recognition? Uh, again, if you're just curious, like what are my games of the years that I played or whatever, that's Doom Eternal, Ori the Will of the Wisps, and Fall Guys. Those are my three favorite games of the year, which they're all three, I think, going to take something home between the things that I voted on. Um, but yeah, 
I just want to hear what you think. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to be geek, proud, awesome, and check out a video to the side. Uh, bye bye. <laughs>